Today, Miss Mallory Irvin, our very first guest on our podcast, and we couldn't be more excited. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, and we talked about so many juicy things. You guys are going to love the first episode. Mallory, we're so honored to have you as our first official guest on Thank Out you. of Bounds. Oh, so what excited. An honor. And for those that don't follow you, which I'm sure they're few and far between, because you have 750,000 Instagram followers currently and 140,000 YouTube subscribers, which is crazy. Thank you. <laughs> so tell everyone your background just a little bit and get us up to speed on your journey. Okay, so I arrived at the place that I'm now, which what do you call this place? I don't know. People are always like, what is your title? And now I just, I guess I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur because I like to do a lot of different things like you and like you, Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So I grew up in Western Kentucky in the country. Country girl, like singing country music, always thought that I would sing forever. Loved the stage and entertaining. I was the oldest of 24 first cousins that grew up on this farm together. That's a big family. It's a big wow. family. Wow. I'm trying to like recreate wow. it here in Nashville, <laughs> but it's a lot harder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I kind of always thought that I would do something on stage or in the public eye, whatever. So I went to school. I was a theater major at Swanee, University of the South, close oh, to Nashville. I love Swanee. You do? You know oh, Swanee? Oh, yes. Mon Eagle. Yes. <gasps> oh, I <laughs> love it. I we would have this connection. Yes. Okay. So do you have, you've stayed, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes. I have a girlfriend who has a cabin in the assembly. Mon- the assembly. Oh, yes. <gasps> So we go on girlfriend weekends. So I went, you know, obviously like during my stay there all the time, like parents weekend and stuff like that. Yeah. I have yet to really go back and experience the assembly since post college. So I'm it's amazing. It's amazing. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I I like that. I love it. A lot of weird (laughs) connections already (laughs) off camera. So there's another one. So I go to Swanee, which is a beautiful place. Jamie and I agree. And I was a theater major. Still thought like that's the direction that I would go in. And then just like life kind of throws a weird thing in there. My dad one time in the car was like, you should be Miss Kentucky. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I'm not that pretty isn't it like a beautiful oh my gosh like, stop it i'm not gonna lie I'm i only expected five you to be feet taller, taller. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like i don't know if like I, my, my qualifications but then i found out it's 35 percent of the score is talent so you know saying that i'd been a singer and i was yeah. like okay i'll give it a run so i started doing the miss kentucky system and three years later i won got to do miss america i was a runner from miss america in 2010 wow. by that time i had graduated college and here I am. I like almost won Miss America, which I'd never done a pageant in my life. I'm like, what in the? Okay. Yeah. Wait, so you <laughs> jumped in. Are. How how many years did you do it before you Three. won? Three. So Took me three times. Don't to most win. people start when they're like five and do uh-huh. toddlers wow. and tears? Uh-huh. And honey boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> honey boo boo. <laughs> I was not a so honey boo So you just jumped in. That's I impressive. I just jumped in. And it's something that really opened up a lot of new territory in my life and revealed a lot of new passions to me. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people think of pageants in the way that I thought of pageants before I did them. And you kind of like laugh at them. And you kind of like, oh, yeah, my sister did one of those. She was Miss Strawberry mm-hmm. Festival or right, whatever. Right, right. But in the state of Kentucky, you work for the Department of Agriculture. And you travel the state, and I spoke to, like, over 300 schools, and I started this big, like, this speaking tour. I got to speak on the Senate and House floor on, like, reform bills for, like, all of these amazing things that I cared about. I got to... Yeah, that's really awesome. Really do these amazing things. And it made me realize like I liked to do more than just sing and be on the stage. Right after Miss America, I was cast for a reality TV show for The Amazing Race. I I can't wait to hear about the, this. I did the show. Um, I ended up doing three seasons wow. of the show. And um, my dad was my partner for the first two seasons. Wow. And it was, you know, I'm the oldest of four children mm-hmm. in my family. And my dad, he built a big business. He always worked during the week. My mom raised it. So this one-on-one time with my dad was so fun. I'm very close to my dad. And it was just the experience of a lifetime. That's amazing. So then it was like, well, shoot, now I like to do TV. Oh, no. (laughs) So, you know, I, I had done all of these things. And then I started filming some travel show pilots, different things. 
And then I went through this period in my life, which I know we'll probably talk about, where I wanted to do more and more and more. I felt like I had to keep topping things. I'm from this really small town, mm-hmm. and people just see me do Miss America and the amazing race. And I felt a lot of pressure, really unraveled, had this full, like, full circle moment where I left a lot of things behind in my life. And that was about five years ago. So I feel like five years ago, here I am with this clean slate being like, I've done all of these things, but how do I now take all the things that I love to do and make them a career? And people were doing blogs, YouTube channels, and all of these things. So I said, I'll start a blog. So I started a blog and six weeks later, so I started a YouTube channel and it exploded. And now I have a podcast, a merchandise line, a book coming out with Random House, one of two books um, in February. And it's just rocking and rolling. So that That's was only amazing. five years ago about, that you started so. YouTube yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. So what is what do you talk about on your YouTube channel? So it like the other things that evolved. I started with like beauty and fashion, mm-hmm. doing makeup tutorials. It would take me like eight hours to do a video. I would film for four. I would do these videos. I had a piece of sequin fabric from Joanne's Fabric. Yeah. That I would throw over a hanging rack. That was my backdrop. An old (laughs) camera. And I would do makeup tutorials and like fashion videos. And then as my life evolved, my YouTube channel evolved. And now we do less YouTube now that, Mm -hmm. um, gosh, writing this book, it was a lot of time and effort and energy. And doing a podcast, as you guys know, Mm -hmm. is a lot of work. But now when we do YouTube videos, they're vlogs, which are just video. Oh, my daughter's in love. Videos of your life. She does vlogs herself. Oh, she, you know a vlog Oh, then. my gosh. Yes. Um, I'm going to have to watch her vlogs. Do you <laughs> allow her to put, her on, to put them on YouTube or are they? So last year during COVID, since, because of the draft, mm-hmm. um, you weren't able to go. My husband wasn't able to go to the office with all of his scouts and everything, mm-hmm. you know, for the actual mm-hmm. draft. So we had to make a makeshift draft room in our media room. And Nate, who's in charge of all social media, Mm -hmm. um, contacted Taylor because she had done some little vlogs here and there during Mm -hmm. COVID just about what we're doing to Mm -hmm. stay safe and also to kill time, you know, and it, it kind of took off so that's really cool it was it was so he contacted her and he was like hey you want to be the face of the draft for the titans so she did so she did her and my youngest so they're 15 and 12 Uh at the time 14 and 11 um they did so whenever john would um make a pic she was there with her phone and really yeah it was really cool go back and watch those i love i love it like keeping it in your family i yeah love just a family anything yeah yeah um that is really cool okay so where are those i need to go back and watch she did put them on youtube okay she did nate has um the ones of her for the draft but um she started it was a spring break that summer actually it was march 2020 she did it with with her girlfriend they went to Florida and they couldn't do anything mm-hmm. but like out yeah they couldn't go eat or anything yeah That's so and so fun. she vlogged the whole trip and we were like wow it's pretty good pretty you know good. yeah and yeah the great thing about vlogs and I don't know what she filmed I'm gonna watch them like as soon as I go home oh, I love it but it's such a time capsule it's a memory you mm-hmm. know our home videos like our mm-hmm. parents they f- filmed front ways. They they never they were never on camera. My mom's hardly yes. ever on camera. On my dad, it was filming us like in our everyday life. I love the vlog style where it's sharing your thoughts and what you're thinking about what's going on yes. and what's your because you have to narrate it's cute. it. It's really it's really cute and what cool they're wearing thing. during the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my gosh. How red they are after the sun. Uh-huh. It was, it's it's really cute. Uh huh. <laughs> it's really That's cute. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, but vlogs are something that I cherish now because like having two every we all have two mm-hmm. two, yes. two two two. Yeah. So you tell know, us about your kids before, because a lot of your video blogging is around your children, yes. which is so sweet. And you're so genuine and real. Thank I think you. that's one thing. If people don't follow you yet, which they will after this, oh, that's sweet. Um, you're like genuine, real. You never, I don't know when I'm looking at your stories, I just feel like that's actually you, mm-hmm. you know, every day. Well, thank you. I think a lot of people in this space, mm-hmm. they, I think it's an easy word to say, that you're authentic and real. And I think it's a buzzword yes. right now. And a lot of people want to call themselves authentic and real. But 
I truly, I do not plan my stories out. I don't edit. I don't look back at them, which you, you said You've off told camera. Me like, you know, so I'll be at like an event with other people that are doing, and I can tell it's, it's very thought out. And I'm, I'm like, man, how great to take it that seriously. But right. then also like, I, I don't have the time <laughs> right, and right. people like seeing real life. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if it's so curated, it loses the people love real that's why people like vlogs right yeah. who would have right. thought people would like to watch other people live in? <laughs> and then here comes reality tv right. vlogs are just like reality tv in our own hands yeah. so i have a one and a three-year-old shepherd is one and ford is three they're 17 months apart mm. and so you're two girls i'm yeah. two boys you're boy and a girl boy and a girl mm-hmm. so i know we all three come from different perspectives yes two boys is like we are the GMs of the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a competition so there. Cute. I can say that. They are but so they cute. are wild and they're funny and they're basically the same age. I love yes. it. And I'm so glad we had them so close. We'd love to have more, but we need a little bit of a break between those two and the next <laughs> set. Yes. But I cannot imagine having boys. Set. I cannot imagine that. And I can't imagine girls. And I hope to have gr- My mom has... I'm. There's two girls in our family, mm-hmm. then two boys. And my mom's always like, if I could go back and have all boys, I, I'd love having boys. <laughs> okay. Thanks, mom. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, mom. Thanks a lot. <laughs> she likes boys. <laughs> but I think I would love to have a girl. But if I had all boys, it'd yeah. be fine. It's weird because in my family, I have two girls. My sister has two girls. My sister-in-law has two girls. Really? Yeah. Every, everywhere. We don't have one boy in this family. Really? Not one. How many grandkids in that that you just... We just have four. Well, both sides. There's four girls, grandkids on John's side as well as rare. my side. Yeah. Lots of girls. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have 24, like I said. That's crazy. Five girls and 19 boys. So we're very... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my heavy. gosh. But all girls? That's all girls. interesting. That yes. Although I laugh all the time saying that my 12-year-old... She, she is, she's my boy. She's a Tom Tom boy. But at the same time, she will be the first one to dress up with you. Yeah. You know, like it's a it's good the best mix, mix with her. But uh, good her mix. older sister is scared to death of her. She runs. If she comes <laughs> after her, she's like, that's my WWE right oh there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's so you got the same thing. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel, Mallory, at first about sharing the boys' lives? Did, did that ever... You know, as everything, and I just explained a little bit in the intro, I try not to overthink the direction that life takes me. Life will roll one thing into another. I don't pre-plan a lot. I really welcome in opportunities that I may not have thought about before. So when I started in this space and I just started showing my boys, I thought about it, but then I didn't see any negatives to it really. And I just kind of rolled with it. I didn't see any changes in their behavior. People found joy in seeing the way I I raised my family and like that we just let our kids be kids. Our kids are dirty and kind of messy and they're wild. Yeah. And we don't take it as seriously as a lot of people. And I think that the lightheartedness was a positive thing. Now, the second that my children say... I don't, I don't want to be on video. I yeah. will not. They won't be on video. Yeah. Yeah. But right now we're rolling with it and it's fine. Yeah. And we've got several opportunities that have presented themselves that I do think twice about because it would be on a larger scale. But right now I'm just, it seems fine. Yeah. So, what do they think about it? Like seeing themselves on oh, video? Are they still too young to understand? They Just like I'm sure your girls like mm-hmm. watching their vlogs back. Yeah. I think that... Right now, they love seeing themselves. Yeah. So if they see me re-watching a story and they hear themselves in the background, they run to the phone. I and like it. over my shoulder, they want to <laughs> see themselves. So at this point, they really like it. And like I mentioned earlier, I love capturing these moments. And I think that for all of the cons of having a phone in our hands yes. all the time, the pro is that like we capture our lives. And if you can make it to where you don't overrun your life by right. showing it to other people, it can really be a really cool thing where you're capturing these moments mm-hmm. and you're sharing, you know, just enough with people, which is my constant struggle is mm-hmm. finding the balance between those two things. But right now they, they love, love it. it and I love it. And it's, that seems awesome. to be fine. I love it. So. I will show my age a little bit right now, but you are going to love it specifically because okay. we got married young, had kids young, so digital cameras were not a thing yet. So when Taylor was born, I was still doing pictures, you know, having to get them developed, and I had I a big it. video camera that I would have to download onto the computer. It's not as easy to go in, and I'm not tech savvy. 
yeah. no way. Like I know they're sitting there probably right now. And my poor Taylor has not seen herself as a baby in a video. Oh. I'm like, I don't know how to get it out. It's, but it's then I can pull it out. out. <laughs> and then yeah. Bailey rolls around. And that's when the video and the camera started coming. But it's so grainy <laughs> that it's like, I'm so sorry, kids. That's, I did love y'all yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? It's the truth, though, between the first and the last child, too, because my mom's always like, I feel so bad going through all these pictures. I have so much of you and then so little of my youngest brother. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, that first child, you've just got a lot of extra time on your hands. Oh, my gosh. Did y'all do baby books? I didn't. Me I neither. I don't. That, I didn't have time for that. People ask me all the time. Who like, has time for that? first tooth? And I'm like... <laughs> I know. I go back it. in my Instagram what? archives. <laughs> I know. That's watch stories if the stories uh -huh. weren't. I did for Jessa, but that was before stories. And so I felt like I needed to capture it. Now uh -huh. I just video Judah all the mm -hmm. time, and he's only six months. So uh -huh. I don't think he's going to get a baby book because I don't have time. Big eyes. You don't. <laughs> oh, I love it when you post about him. He's so precious. That's he's such so a cute good. name, too. Mm -hmm. I love the name Judah. Oh, I have not heard of another Judah. It's so hard to have a unique name. It mm -hmm. is. I thought Shepard was the only Shepard that I knew besides like one person I'd ever seen on TV. And now people are like, oh, I named my baby Shepard. And I'm like, oh, okay. I love is how it, you always you? bring the accent in there. Yeah. Whatever you <laughs> <laughs> like someone else is a sticker than mine. It's never. <laughs> I talk like when I repeat myself, I repeat myself in a stronger accent. I think <laughs> just making myself a character oh all the gosh, time. I love it. Yes, I love it. Best accent. Well, let's talk about the amazing race. I'm dying to know because I, I used to watch it all the time. Oh, you And did. I'll be completely honest. So going back to what you were saying about being authentic and not doing research and just going with the mm -hmm. flow, that's exactly who I am. So going in today, I knew tidbits. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I knew about you is the amazing race. But as far as watching, I have not seen anything. So mm -hmm. tell us where you went and did you and your father fight at all? And, you know, the, all that good yeah. juicy stuff. The thing that a lot of people don't know, which who knows if I'm supposed to say this or not, but <laughs> um, is that they kind of reach out. A lot of people apply. So I think they say they get like 40,000 applications per season. That wow. was what they told us years and years mm -hmm. ago. And they pick 11 teams out of those 40,000. That's what we heard. Wow. Okay, but sometimes they cast people to come into the process where you're getting chosen. So it doesn't mean I pick you, you're in. It means I pick you. Would you like to apply for the show oh, wow. and go through the casting process? Yeah. So after Miss America, someone reached out to me from casting and first asked about Survivor. And I was like, Lord. Oh, no. my gosh. I've been starving to death <laughs> for this pageant. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Oh like, gosh. I've got to eat and drink oh for a gosh. few months so I graciously declined and like 30 minutes later they called back and mm -hmm. were like have you seen the show the, the amazing race and I said my dad has been sitting on our couch every Sunday night for like 10 years watching that show could I apply with my dad oh I they said it. sure so we start the application process my dad d is not like me not an extrovert speaks his mind he is doesn't speak a lot is very intelligent salt of the earth kind like just different not hey put him on tv <laughs> not that kind of person <laughs> so we start going through the process and the head casting person said so she is the casting director's dream and my dad said so what am i <laughs> and she said you're my worst nightmare oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. so they said if we can get about 75 percent less of her and about 75 percent oh more gosh. of you we can we can probably get you guys on the show Long story short, we made it on the show. And this whole show, you do the whole world. So you start in America. If, if a listener hasn't heard of this show, you're racing 10 other teams for a million-dollar prize. Mm -hmm. And you go around the world. So say you start in Boston, Massachusetts, which is where we did the first season. And you open this clue, and it says, fly to somewhere in England. F find this castle, and this knight will hand you the clue. And then this knight tells you, like, you have to learn jousting and, like, do this thing to get your next clue. Then you have to build a boat and go across this moat and learn oh to juggle gosh. with a clown. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't and all do this that. crazy stuff. But your dad's perfect for that. Oh, he's perfect. He is He is a prepper. He is a thinker. He's a packer. He knows to the ounce what the backpack weighs. Because prepping really matters on a show like that. Because uh -huh. you're carrying everything that you need for the top of the Matterhorn and the 110 degree heat of Ghana oh in your geez. backpack. You've got to have the right socks that you can run 15 miles in through a jungle and that you can literally be in 
below zero temperatures in. Oh. And that was my dad's specialty. Because and did he, I think your followers all know that your dad climbs huge, huge, huge mountains. mountains. Yes. And he, it's like his, Everest. Yeah. And like oh my those. goodness. But did really? He, he yes. started that before. Wow. No. Oh, he, he started he after Amazing He Race. always was an adventurer, I would say, in business. And he built a big business and took some big risks. They were that type of people, his family. But he didn't start the mountain climbing until after the Amazing oh, Race. Oh, wow. Okay. So so we did this first season of the Amazing Race. We made it like fourth team from the end. So we made it pretty far. And we got lost. There was a natural disaster. It washed this road over that we couldn't <gasps> oh, have known. No. It wasn't no. meant to be. We were so upset because we knew like we were some of the best racers. Yeah, that We yeah, should have yeah. made it further. And we got a call like two weeks after we got home asking us if we wanted to do the all-star season oh, which oh was my coming gosh. up the next season wow and we and our season hadn't even aired yet it was just like i mean it gives me chills it was just the it was such a surprise and just to do two seasons back yeah to back. so within 2010 i had done miss america almost one done an amazing race almost one and then we did another amazing race all within this year it was such a huge year for me and we almost won that all-star season we lost by a minute and 30 seconds what in a bad taxi we wow. got lost for an hour and a half so this is like shows my kentucky roots so some people are like cutthroat on this show they're like there's a million dollar prize at yeah. stake i will do anything to win this million dollars i will leave people behind i'll break alliances i will cut in front of people i'll be rude we weren't like that uh -huh. so we get off the final plane after we'd done the whole entire world in Miami, Florida, we run, jump in this taxi with a GPS. You see that the taxi driver speaks perfect English. And we say, go, go, go to this place. And this lady's standing there and she says, I've been waiting for that taxi. You guys stole my taxi. So instead of us like being a, like, we're on a show and we're almost to the million dollars. Is there any way you could get this, this next taxi? Like yes. we can give you a little bit of money after we win. <laughs> we get out of the taxi and get in the next taxi. Oh. The guy has a flip phone can't speak english no gps oh, and no. we get lost for an hour and a half oh and my that's gosh. what lost us that and season that's of the show. What's... but you know what i i think you know what who garth brooks says it un, unanswered prayers people say it in like all these different ways not winning the amazing race that season was the best thing that happened to me i was i was spinning a little bit from all of these successes. Here I am, like in my mid twenties, and I'd done all of these things, very public things. I'm this tiny small town girl, mm -hmm. and I think I was in such like ultra achievement mode. I'll do anything to do more and more and more. That I don't think winning the show and having a million dollars at my disposal would have been the best thing for me. Yeah, I think it could have halted a lot of the things that have brought me to success mm -hmm. that I've found later in life that came with a lot of hard work and. A lot of like scraping and struggling and hustling. Yeah. And looking back on that, and I write about that in my book. It was a, a, Amazing Grace, I mm -hmm. guess, for better word, on the Amazing Grace and me not winning that season. Yeah. Yeah. And That's such a good way to look at it. Because yeah. what's meant to be, one. yeah, what's lost meant to be will be. <laughs> then you lost is, another one. It but is true. You talk about spiraling. I know you've given up drinking mm -hmm. and you've haven't drank in how many years i think it's like seven seven wow, years that's yeah. impressive. as we're staring at all of your display of uh, all of the <laughs> alcohol that you have here in the gibson <laughs> garage in the well gibson tell me garage. Yeah. before we start that it, how old are you if you don't mind me 35 asking. 35 mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. i would not have guessed 35 would you have guessed younger or older <laughs> <laughs> definitely younger. Yeah. I will tell it's all you good that. either one. It's definitely all good. younger. Yeah. Okay. You're are we so the same age? We are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I turned thirty five in June, so what? Hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm turning forty two in October. I wouldn't have oh, October gosh. what? First. Okay, twenty six. No way. Both October. Libra. Mm -hmm. yes. Knew it. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just find that impressive because I think you saw that it was an issue and gave it up and That's yeah. a young age to give it up too. Yeah. In my twenties. And you know what's funny? So I've had a bit of a roundabout journey with removing this from my life. I think a lot of people in quote unquote recovery, they do it a little bit of a different way than I mm -hmm. did. I didn't drink my whole life. I didn't drink until the very end of college. I was always the person that didn't really have to drink. I never showed an interest. I was always like the good girl. I didn't. I just didn't. And then I was like, there was nothing I had against it. All my friends did. Like, all my friends partied to the maximum. And I was just like, whatever, okay. So, at the end of college, I started drinking. And my whole, like, span of, of drinking probably only lasted, like, five or six years. But mm -hmm. as a young person, I could already see how this was steering my life 
in the wrong direction. How I was numbing out things I was supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. How I was feeling things that I don't think I really meant to feel. Like they were just imposed by like what I was feeling when I was drinking. And I think because I started drinking so late, I could see such a drastic difference. Yeah, right. yeah that the person right. that I was before yeah. I started numbing things out mm-hmm. yeah. and blending things together Not with to all these substances. You were probably like dieting for Miss Kentucky and mm-hmm. doing all that. And we all know that alcohol and dieting don't go together. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they don't. And, you know, I was in ultra achievement mode. My schedule when I was Miss Kentucky, I would wake up at like sometimes four in the morning I would exercise and then I would have to travel to my first school by myself. So sometimes I would leave at five something. I would go downstairs to Dunkin' Donuts and like I would eat at the beginning of my reign, like before, as I got closer to Miss America, I would slowly weed out the Dunkin' Donuts munchkins that I could eat. So I started, I could eat like eight in the beginning of my reign. Then I'll go down like six, then like four, then like two. And it's funny, Coach Calipari from UK, he used to eat at that Dunkin' Donuts too. So like we would see each other and it was just this this funny thing. So anyways, I would go down there, I would get my coffee, my donuts, and then I'll drive to the school and I would sometimes speak at like seven schools. One school, I would leave the school, speak at another school for an hour, leave, speak at another school for an hour, leave. And it was just this like go, go, go schedule. So I was starting to get burned out. I was not a person that got burned out. Just like I'm sure a lot of people listening to this podcast, like when you start to feel tired, you don't decide to rest. You decide to be like, well, what can I take to like keep going? Because I can't really stop. Yeah. So I had doctors prescribing me on top of drinking medication that I probably didn't need Mm -hmm. to keep going in that period of time. And I didn't really have much of an issue with it then, but it did develop into an issue that also compounded this. And I just think looking back, thank the Lord that I went through what I went through because it brought me to this deeper way of living, having to go through that. And, and don't let me paint it lightly. Like it was definitely an issue for me. Everybody says one day at a time, but like, I truly know that I won't pick it up again, but it made my life so much brighter again. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if a lot of people, whether they're like me and they have an issue or whether they like, they're like I was in the beginning where I didn't really have an issue, but I was just bringing on heaviness and darkness and in numbing out all of the hard stuff and the bad stuff and I'm doing too much and I can't rest stuff. I was also numbing out all of the vibrance that I'd always felt Mm -hmm. in my life. And so I kind of made a roundabout journey to where I'm at now. And sometimes like when my children are insane Mm -hmm. and when I have a (laughs) hundred work deadlines and when my husband can like unwind Sometimes you look and you're like, man, that well, that must be nice. But I also like look at the way that I am. And I know that I have a deeper existence for the harder ways that it takes me to get to places sometimes. Yeah. Than I used to. And I'm grateful for that. That's no, very that's impressive. Amazing. Yeah. All of that being said, I know we started talking about the amazing race with all of that. But just like we started talking about in the beginning of this podcast, it's like things in my life kind of flowed. And I learned so many lessons through so many random different things. Yeah. And I definitely didn't walk a um, straight line. Yeah. And I'm really glad for that. I'm still not walking a straight line. I really. Whoever does. I didn't expect. Yeah. Whoever <laughs> does. Who does that? Did you expect to be like in this spot? Did you expect to be the wife of a GM? Absolutely not. So I thought. It's I was, interesting. It is. It? it so is. When we started dating, he told me, he was like, you know, this is, this is my life. This is my career. At the time he was a, a coach and he was, he said, We'll probably move around a lot. And before meeting him, I thought I'd always stay in Houma, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was exciting. And we never expect it to be in the seats that we are now. So there's a purpose. There's a reason why you get mm-hmm. put in the seat the way you are. Mm-hmm. That's my belief. Yes. And so, I mean, it's insane to me that you are in your 20s. And I have a girlfriend who is Die hard wildcat mm-hmm. went to UK was in a sorority and she's like Jamie, these people can party. Yes. <laughs> so we that's can. why I'm like just living in that area and you know it's and it's yeah. like me going to LSU having to try to do that. Mm-hmm. You know it's mm-hmm. still un- such yeah. a big part of culture too. Yeah, so right. it's extra impressive. I just yeah. feel like it's you know I write about events for a living and attend them and it's at every event. It's you know and so We've I can imagine about that it's before, hard. Yeah, too. It's for like sure. Even like you know you've endured pregnancies, so I guess yeah. that's the closest thing mm-hmm. where you just all of a sudden have to stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a big change 
I think in a lot of people in, you know, me in very early, like I stopped cold turkey one day. I, I'm, I'm doing everything 100%. One day I'm not. Mm-hmm. And that was seven years ago. And here we are. And I think that the first thing people notice are all the emotions that you have to sit with. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. You got to live in it. You can't just. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do? I'm guilty of that. After a long day with two kids, I open a beer and chill. And it's probably yes, not the best. wrong with that. No, but it's, it's definitely not always the best thing to do, you know. You know, I think there's there can be a balance. If you have an issue like me, like, no, I think you you can live a better life the way that I live. Yeah. But if you're like you where you can find balance in it, I think that as long as you can find a way to find balance, mm-hmm. I think it's great. But I do notice during pregnancy that I am so much more even a uh-huh. little bit. Like I... I don't know. I just, you wake up every day and you feel the same thing and uh-huh. you're in the same thing and you're, you know, That's and then it's, it's a little less. Yeah. I don't know. I don't up know how and to, down. yeah. Yeah. Roller coaster Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. I remember when the kids were that young and I would, I mean, there were, there were days I could not wait to just have, sit, have a glass of wine, have my book, but it's true that you, you can get dependent on it. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. like, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that. My, my like kids drive me it. crazy yeah. like yeah. when yeah. they were younger. Yeah. But the other difference now is now I have the time. Mm-hmm. They do their stuff. John comes home and we we do. It's easy yeah. to have a glass of wine, bourbon, whatever yeah. you like, and, you know, and and like alcohol can be replaced with anything. I think like we're we're using drinking because that's my personal story. Mm-hmm. But I think that a lot of people escape their lives with a lot of different things like social media Mm -hmm. (laughs) or like Netflix. Like if you are looking forward to, and I, I know something needs to change when I am lusting for nighttime, for quiet, for sitting on my couch and like, (laughs) everybody leave me alone. And I'm like, okay, I got to, and maybe I need to take a step back or like I need some time during the day. But people do it with like Netflix shows, like people yeah. that hate their career or their job, maybe Monday through Friday. They're they're too scared to make a change and they're looking forward to Saturday. And su- that's when they feel like the only time they feel like they can live mm-hmm. and they can be, they can numb out with 100 different things. And mm-hmm. ne- if you're watching a Netflix show for the two days that you're supposed to rest and restore, that right. can be the same thing, right. you know? Totally, yeah. It's just kind of an addictive thing or, yeah. or just avoiding, uh-huh. I guess. But that brings us to your whole brand, which we were kind of talking about, is living fully. Uh-huh. When did that launch officially? Because were you kind of just under Mallory Irvin and then living fully launched at a certain point? Yeah, you know, just kind of like probably with yours, it's like you start you start something and people ask you when you started and it's like, when, I don't know. when did I start it? And then when did I hire the, <laughs> when did this happen? I like, know. You know about th- brands exploding the best of anyone. But I, I started thinking, I've never been a person that wanted to, it's fine that some influencers do it like this. You're never going to see a brand that's called like, the Mallory Irvin cups. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Or the Mallory <laughs> Irvin shirts. Well, we or would the, wear them. And well, we that's would very sweet. Them. <laughs> but, like, I want my brand to be about community mm-hmm. and for people to feel like it's as much their brand as it is mine. Living fully is the life. I, f- I found a really full life. I feel like I'm living fully when I'm not, like, numbing out. I feel like I'm living fully in my life now where I am just like riding all of these waves where I'm taking on all these things that maybe I didn't think that I would ever do in my life. And I'm trying them. I always seek for a a full, full life in the least like cliche way to Mm -hmm. seek it, which is why I wrote a whole book on it. Because as I started my brand, what I noticed was people sent me the same message over and over. Like, I wish, I wish I had this, or I wish I could be as positive I wish Mm -hmm. I could wake up and smile and I wish I could have these things that I could tell they were only seeing on the outside. And I was Mm -hmm. like, wait, wait. So I went through like this big thing in my life and like I arrived here and I definitely have hard times. I'm just not going to crawl out of bed onto Instagram and be like, yes, it's terrible. (laughs) It's terrible. (laughs) You put in the work. work. You put in the work though. You put in, I feel like daily and monthly and you put in the work every day to be positive and who you are. I do. But like you don't show, I'm not going to show my therapy session on my Instagram story. Right. Yeah. So I realized like there was a piece of the brand that was missing. So I would send messages all the time and that was the message I would always respond to and I would be like, no, no, no. Like, let me tell you a little bit of my story because 
I truly believe you can achieve this too. It wasn't, this it wasn't an automatic thing. Everybody thinks you're automatically one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I've got to birth another part of my brand that is this part of it, where maybe I do a podcast, maybe I do a merchandise line, maybe one day I write a book, maybe one day we do speaking tours. And that's where the living fully kind of thing, I did this rebrand and I said, what does my whole brand mean? It's to live fully. And now you're doing all of that. And now podcasting, I love it. it's merchandising. A too full. The book, no. <laughs> you know what's awesome though is seeing you on your Instagram and seeing the pictures and you just look like you're larger than life. And thank you. But sitting here talking to you, that's your personality. Well, that really is. You're not hiding behind a camera. You, that's actually you. And I'm highly impressed about that. Thank you. Because that I've, means a lot coming from you. Yeah, thank you. I've seen a lot to where, you know, it's, that's the persona that everybody wants, mm-hmm. but it's not really true. It's not yes. the true self. And, and you work hard. You yeah. know, I think that's yeah. a lot of people think influencers or even Nashville guru. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you go eat and drink or you just film your daily life. It's You're not so doing much. that mm-hmm. much. And it's like, I, I remember the first time I met you because I went to college with mm-hmm. Mallory's husband, Kyle. Oh, okay. And so I ran into him. I think it was Pilgrimage Festival, if I'm not mistaken. And this was like I had four a brand new five, baby, right? Yeah, I think four was that three or four years ago? I don't know. Yeah. Or you were pregnant. That is. Or something like that. Uh-huh. I can't remember exactly. I I don't sleep enough for that. But um, <laughs> I don't but I ran in and I saw Kyle and I had never met you. Mm-hmm. And you were like doing the selfie stick and the, and you were working. <laughs> I mean, stick. I no, it. she was working because uh-huh. she takes her job extremely seriously. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking like, gosh, and you were so kind and sweet to me. But also you were working. You were there to work. You had a mission. And I just remember that. Well, that's, that's probably good. where we connected and why we decided to go to Bar Taco shortly thereafter. <laughs> we did. <laughs> where we talked about, if I can remember correctly, like, Abby, I think you're probably like me and that like, and you probably are too. Mm-hmm. I, I want to do so much, so much, so much, so much. I mm-hmm. don't want to leave anything on the table. Mm-hmm. I want to do it all. I want to do it all now. Mm-hmm. And and then I get it all and I do it all. And then I'm like, I want to do less. I want to go yep, off the grid. I don't have time uh-huh. for this. I, gotta, I don't have time for this. Where's my family? Like my children and my husband matter the most. Then you scale back and then you start taking it totally. all back. Totally. And so totally. I think that day at Bar Taco, we're talking about all these ideas. Of, and uh, you know what's funny? And I was thinking about this on the way here. You were talking about a podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. But you were talking about a podcast and you were talking about how you would like to do it with another person. Stop it. Yeah. Yes, really? Yeah. And we were talking about manifesting things also. Like, because no remember kidding. we were, mm-hmm. she was talking about how she wanted to do a podcast. She wanted it to be lifestyle, kind of about business, kind of about lifestyle, but like an extension of what you were doing mm-hmm. with. And here we are. That's yeah. probably I didn't know later. Yeah. And like, you didn't even know probably no. each other no. at that point in time. No. And I hadn't started my podcast yet either. No. So it's just, it's I really know. funny. How and I think. You know, as I've gotten older and I've been, you know, doing this career and raising young children, like I've learned to be very patient with things. You know, I, I used to kind of push and make things happen because that's my personality. And now I've learned, like, if you sit back and you're just work hard and put Mm -hmm. yourself in the way of luck, like you're going to do it. It's going to come your way. And Mm -hmm. it it has like, this podcast is amazing. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. When we met, it was like true love. (laughs) It truly was. We never knew each other. We never, I mean, I knew natural guru. Everybody knows natural guru, but it's It's very natural. But you know what it, what you both feel like to me. I, I do other people's podcasts and a lot of these podcasts, they're fast talking, they're high paced. It's very like entertainment-y. You, I feel like I'm sitting and talking to two friends that like Aww. I would just go to Bar Taco with. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. You feel like like home. You feel like Nashville. You feel like it's Aww. it feels much more real, really real and authentic. The real, authentic, real and authentic. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's such a compliment. I love it. I'm actually and tearing up because know, that's been the whole cry. goal. It's um, you've yeah. nailed, you've hit the nail on the head for that's sure. Awesome. And I don't know a ton about football. We are big Titans fans, as as everyone in Nashville. We are season ticket holders. You know what's so funny? I don't think it was no, it's not, it wasn't Nate, but it was another guy that worked within the Titans, and this was really cool what they what they let us do. And so I bought Kyle season tickets like uh-huh. when I could a few years back. And 
this is what's something cool about the Titans because you feel like they're like down home. They're not some big untouchable NFL team. They have this like face and this cool spirit about them, which is what I really feel from you. Mm -hmm. But this, so I reached out to this guy. (laughs) I said, how do you get season, season tickets? Like I'm interested in buying them. And he said, okay, like here's for what you're looking for in the price. Here are the two spots. And I was like, gosh, I want to surprise him, but I wish he could see them to pick. And he said, well, would you like to come tomorrow? And he can look. And I was like, (gasps) Are you serious? Oh, that's awesome. So he, I was able to, you know, drive to the stadium and he didn't know who I was, that Mm -hmm. I was an influencer or anything. And he didn't even ask any of those questions. And I said, Kyle, I've got your birthday present. I drove him to the Titan Stadium. We go into the Titan Stadium and I said, sit in these seats. And then we walked to the other side with with the representative, of course, I sitting in the it. other seats. And then he got to pick. And Kyle was like, I feel like Kanye. Oh, like, my gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. But it was just really um, cool. And I will always remember that. And I feel that from the Titans. And, of course, mm-hmm. we've got some friends that um, play for the Titans. And, of course, going to Swanee, too, the Adams family. So Kenneth Adams was I was just about to me, talk I was about friends them. with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got a lot of connections. But meeting you, gosh, you couldn't go with this brand any, Aww, any better. Because it means the world to you, me. Um, and it's funny. I didn't know that w- what your husband had told you he was going to do uh-huh. back in the day. Uh-huh. But I think uh, one of the most special kinds of women are coaches' wives. Mm-hmm. I think they're very selfless and they're kind and they have this cool sense of family. And when you said that, I, you remind me of that. Only you you have this, your oh, husband has this Jamie's big crying. scale job and position, but you still are that exact same person. That's Cheers. really cool. And I'm Cheers. really happy <laughs> that like we got oh to meet God. in this really public <laughs> place. But you just don't know because it, it's, I mean, we've been married 20 years. Mm-hmm. We've been together for 22. And coming from a small town, you know, I never, I never expected anything like this. Mm-hmm. So when he started scouting for the, the Patriots, I mean, we jumped from, we went, we had to move a lot. Um, he was with them 14 years, I want to say. But when we were with them, we lived in Atlanta, we lived in Dallas, and then we lived in Boston for our last five years. Scouting was mm-hmm. never on his list. Mm-hmm. And so he just kept going up and up and up. And then I'll never forget. So my dad, four years ago, passed away. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that. And um, he, John, got the job with the Titans the year before, maybe six eight months before my dad passed away no I take that back because we've been here for six seasons that doesn't add up right (laughs) (laughs) this is where my daughter would come in and say mom seriously get it right (laughs) but anyway my dad was able he actually was able to come to two it was two seasons because he came to a couple of games before he got really sick and the one thing I told him when John got the job was dad if ever you see me change from that bayou girl you better smack me upside the head and get get, tell me to come back down to life and back to reality I don't want to change and I try my hardest to do that and it's so important to me because I see these wives the staff and I've been there I've done that I've you know and it just it 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 means the world to me to be able to be with them and go through the journey with them. I may not be able to be there all the time, but they know they can call me. And so the fact that you said that my without kind of even woman. meeting oh, you until kind of today, woman. it means the world. And that's Aww. why I bought like a baby. <laughs> I love that. That is so special though. It's that embodies what I want to be in this position. You just said it perfectly. When you rise to a place that there's a lot of eyes on you or people value mm-hmm. that position, unfortunately, so many people, they change as their position changes. Yeah. And I can, fe- I can feel that promise that you made from your dad in like two mm-hmm. hours of knowing you, that you, you will keep that promise. And what Thank a... Um, or we'll smack you upside the head. What a, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that really is like... it. I know. If everyone that was successful or mm. 
could just hold that if every influencer if every yes. wife of a person in a position like a gm if every person that owns a business the size of national Google yes. could just remember that we're just all just real people yeah. <laughs> exactly the world would be so much exactly. different and kids wouldn't aspire to be the way that people are when they get like a little bit rotten inside yeah. when they get like big time <laughs> you know it would just be so much it would be so much better. It's funny, like whenever you said you were like, "We don't want to waste your time. We can do all the intro and stuff after." And I was like, "I'm not Beyonce. Don't <laughs> worry. My time is not that valuable. I can stay." It is, but um, yeah. well, it's when you when you get to where you can be, like us, do, being able to do this this podcast and having and you having the platform that you have, you have to use it. Mm -hmm. You have to use it for good and you have to use it the way it's supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. Like we have, we have our daughter, she has multiple autoimmune issues, type one diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. She has alopecia. She's Mm -hmm. so cute. She's bald. She's so cute. Oh, she's beautiful. But it's, it's one of our things when she was diagnosed at um, six years old, we lived in Boston and I've always said, if you ever get a GM job, you know, this is my goal. My goal is to use your platform to be able to talk about it, to be able to bring awareness. Not necessarily, we do raise a lot of money for it, but not necessarily about that. It's about raising awareness. It's about Taylor being able to raise awareness for these kids to yeah. say, hey, look, look at me. I'm normal. Mm-hmm. Everything is fine. Mm-hmm. So that has been our goal with all this you know and it's just you got to use your platform and good and if you're snotty you can't do that you know wow. people don't want to listen to you that way and yeah. that's so true I didn't know that you're I didn't know that about your daughter yes and yeah. I would love to meet your daughter that's really I bet she is quite the kid and will be quite the adult because to go yes. through adversity like that especially mm-hmm. as a young person that crafts, I think, the best people among us. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's. I mean, but to have a mom yeah. too that like believes in her and that hey, we're going to use this to make a difference. Mm-hmm. That makes it even more special. I had gestational diabetes with both of my Did pregnancies. You? I was on a lot of insulin, like my second one, and I was just diagnosed as pre-diabetic a few months ago. And uh, I only had one cousin that I knew as a young person with mm-hmm. diabetes, but that. I cannot imagine managing something like that as a child. Like what, just knowing as an adult, like with a pregnancy that I was trying to keep viable. And mine Mm -hmm. wasn't like a light case. Mine was really Mm -hmm. threatening uh, case. Like I just really admire kids who are able to to do that and Mm -hmm. parents that support them in doing that. So anything you guys do in that walk of life please yeah. let me know what That's i can true. what light Girl, i can shine on it too <laughs> <laughs> you let me know sure you let me know well we we want to talk about your book and we've awesome. mentioned it several times can you tell us a little bit more because it's one of two mm-hmm. so what can people expect and okay. when can they we have to know like pre-order we're going to be first on the okay. list hey mm. well that's really sweet of you so this book <laughs> almost killed me right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm a those, huge book lover, by you the way. Are, yes. So what yes. are like, tell me some of your favorite books to read. Oh my goodness. Or that you've ever read. I love fiction, historical fiction, things like that. Okay. Uh, where the Crawl Dad sing. Y'all, they, oh, yeah. they just she filmed reads. it in my hometown. Oh, We're, really? Yeah. And ironically, one of my very best friends, her husband's aunt is the one that wrote it. What? And we like, it, it was weird. We were talking in conversation one really? day. And I was talking to her son. And he was named, his middle name is uh-huh. after her. And I was like, oh, one of the authors that I just love, it has that name. And he goes, Miss Jamie, that's my aunt. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, what? what a small world. Okay, yes. it is. Jamie yes. reads like 10 books a week or something. <laughs> that she, is awesome, though, that you take the time to do that. She, I commend you for oh, that. Oh, I love yeah. it. I, lo- I just love it. I don't, awesome. I don't do, so talking about the neck. Netflix binge I don't do that I read and but so I t- it's totally that's not nummy I don't no. think that um reading is is uh checking out like <laughs> Netflix it I, that is awesome yeah actually yeah she's, she's her book's gonna have to be on Jamie's I can't books. wait yes uh-huh. so I, ha- okay, I did yeah. my own little Instagram because all my friends are always asking me what are you reading what you yeah. know and so I finally after years my sister had been begging me to do this forever uh-huh. And so I did Jamie's books on Instagram. Yeah. I'm and have to so check that out. It really yes. just makes me feel bad because I never have time to read. <laughs> I, now, I listen to probably three books a week. So I listen to books um, when I work out. Mm-hmm. And I listen to 
uh, over and over and over and over. And also like doing a podcast, I read every book of any author. I have a lot of authors on my podcast and I, I read the book cover to cover. I do oh, not I let that. an assistant yeah. read and skim. I really try to read everything. I love Which, it. Before we get back to your book, your podcast is in how many seasons now or is it just oh ongoing? Because you so have over 60 episodes. Ongoing. Right? And then I was like, I cannot sustain this. <laughs> I don't have a huge crew. You know, we're really doing it. I do have a team that edits it that, that's off-site and stuff. But I could not write the book with two tiny babies and the podcast and all of my brand deals and the YouTube yeah. channel, social media. And no, like, I wanted to do everything myself. I should have hired four employees like four four years ago, like everybody else. How my many size do you did. have? I only have one full time right now, and then I have a merchandise team, a podcast team, okay. I have different teams that I hire out to do different things. But I have one like full time all the time. Well, and then one that does like half family stuff, like half other stuff. So I guess two. Yeah. So, but that was recent. So I did everything by myself. <laughs> yeah. And if you hear from someone online, it's me. Like it's yeah. not. It's not I love that. Else. That's awesome. I, I love when Kyle answers an email. I send you. That's my favorite. KD. He, he does it very like um, very professionally, and I'm like, I love it. Kyle, that is not on brand. He'll be like, um, very cut to the chase, and he's like, well, after having it, because he owned a parking company here for a long time. Okay. And he's like, people don't want all that fluff, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people also don't. Thanks, KD. Right. Like, why right. can't you just write, oh. Kyle? Thanks so much. <laughs> That's the difference between me and my husband. I'm very fluffy and he is not. Yes. <laughs> no. Same. There is room Same. for the fluff. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Kyle okay. responds. I love but it. I have someone else now that responds more responsibly than Kyle. <laughs> Kyle got a little lax with it. And I was like, I got to get an employee to do this. Oh my but anyway, so the book process, this is my big debut. I had a lot of deals on the table that I could choose. For, thankfully, with a lot of different publishers, I went with random house and I had a full color lifestyle option on the table I had my part memoir part prescriptive self-help I had all these different books I could have written and I said I need to write this part it's not a memoir but it mm. starts with a story I'm a big storyteller my family's always been like very rich with storytelling we still stand around my grandparents to this day and they tell their story over and over and over again of like how they built their businesses how they all of these failures and all of these things and we have this slideshow and we're just it's big it's a rich thing in my family so I said I want this book to be steered by stories so it starts with a story and then it's like a self-help kind mm -hmm. of a lesson that I learned but I'm not Brene Brown. I'm, I don't have a PhD. I've, I've been through a lot of things, though. And I've come to a lot of realizations at a young age that I would hate for someone to miss out on 30 years of life uh, and not come to. And I was forced oh, into wow. a lot of the realizations that I came to. I was almost pushed in the direction of uh, whenever I stopped drinking and all of that out of necessity, I um, lost things that guided me in a certain direction. Opportunities fell into my lap. I think a lot of these things like happened upon me. But I also think later in my life with my head screwed on pretty straight, <laughs> I have to choose to re-steer my ship with the things that I already know. Because I think that you can just live your life just it just happens to you and oh, yeah. um, you can kind of fall into cruise control and your life becomes something that you didn't mean for it to become. Mm -hmm. totally. And then you think it's too late to change. Mm -hmm. And that is what like I constantly rage against mm -hmm. um, because I just want to live this rich, full life. And a lot of times I turn the tables up like on a, the Real Housewives in my life. Mm -hmm. Not like actually, like I don't throw fits in my house, but I try I'll have this breakdown of things and then I'll just put it all back together or I make the choice to change something. And so in my book, I'm speaking to the people who maybe need to make a change, but I'm speaking to the people who maybe don't know that they need to make a change yeah. and who say like, my life is fine or say the absence of bad is is the qualifier right. for good, right? Like just because nothing's going wrong. Like they don't know they're settling, but they maybe they are. Yeah. Yes. And had I not gone through what I went through, I would have lived my life like that and not known to change. Mm -hmm. I would have settled. It would have been good, but it would have been on the surface. Yeah. All these things happened to me and I realized what it was like to need to change and make a change that way. And now here I am in this third chapter of my life, sometimes being forced to make changes, but sometimes choosing to make changes that some people think it might be a little bit easier. 
uh, not to make, but I just won't live my life like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what an I inspiration you are. Weighs it all out. She is. That's She's incredible. so wise. Thanks. You're so That's, wise. I can't wait to read it. I know. When does Thank it come you. out? So February 8th, 2022. Oh, there we go. It's supposed to come out February in September, 8th. but it will when this podcast comes out. You can pre-order it. And that would be just so amazing because I am I'm a first-time author who signed with Random House, which the largest publisher in the world. This was a big dream of mine. Then it almost killed me writing it. But I think that I love um, talking about what I what I wrote about because it's it is. I think I think it's what I'm meant to do. I do yeah. believe yeah. that speaking on. The, I think that all the things ha- that happened to me and then speaking on these things is is part of what I'm meant to do. I think being a mom is the other thing that I'm meant to do. Is mm-hmm. your path your yeah. path in life? So, I cannot wait yeah. to read it. What's the title? Living Fully. Living and we're still working on the subtitle right now. Um, so whichever one is printed on the, whenever they click the pre-order <laughs> link is the one that there we, go. we decided <laughs> on. <laughs> but um, I just want everybody to kind of defy that just getting by mindset and just live a, a bigger life than just on the surface. Wow. Because there's so much more than an easy life, yes. I think. Yeah. I agree. Um, and there's so much more than what people assume your life is like yes you know and it it has to be frustrating for you too because i'm i i'm assuming that other people just look at you and say oh well she must have x y and z and you know because that happens to me a lot yes and it's like no that's that's not right i know and it makes you it upsets it used to upset me Mm -hmm. because i knew it was just so opposite of true and how hard i worked and just now feeling like I know you, I'm mm-hmm. sure that it deeply upset you oh, as well goodness. because you see you're so salt of the earth as are you. So when people say, Oh, you just eat and drink, you're like, <laughs> Do you even know like what time I went to bed last night after I put my kids down? Like t- hyping? Yeah. Like, the, for you to read so you could go to the right place to eat with your one weekend. Like <laughs> And then you, I mean, you know, moving and uprooting your life and having yeah. children now, knowing that you've you've had a, a journey with one of your children mm-hmm. too. It's like, man, if you if you knew and you want them to know, and it's yeah. okay that they don't know. Yeah. But I I will continue to tell them. I love it. I yeah. will continue to tell them. And if they if they don't want to believe it. I'm not going to chase him down the rabbit hole. I used to want to chase him down the rabbit hole because I just yes. couldn't stand it. <laughs> I, I was know. like, no, I'm like way different than all the other people that right. do this. I'm, I'm yeah. really not like that. And like, please don't tell other people. I'm like, because I'm not. And you've never even met me. <laughs> That's the thing. But it's, um, it's a blessing and a curse to be a public mm-hmm. person. And I think the more and more exposure that you get the more people might get it wrong but we have to continue to keep getting it right and keep smiling and keep mm-hmm. smiling because it's it's really who we I know yes. I know you off camera and I know this is exactly how you are and I know you're like a really kind person and like even Kyle tells me about how you are in college and he said you've always been like a go-getter and smart and everything that you are now so I know like that's kind of and and I know already like that that's who you are through and through so it's like if we can just yeah. stay that yeah. way wouldn't we try, just, right? We will. I know. Well, <laughs> we you're will. such a light. You really are. You I just feel are like as well. getting to talk to you and you taking time is like an honor, really. Oh, oh, our thing. first um, guest, Abby. I know. What an honor. I'm so it's excited. So I wish I know. we... Ha- I was about to say, have champagne to toast. <laughs> oh, that's how no. <laughs> this Apple cider. Apple cider. Apple <laughs> cider. Oh, my gosh. And we oh, didn't even you. get to the merch oh. launch or merch launches oh, that that's just blow a it out of the thing. water. But yeah. It, so I brought you guys. Those are the only yes, two I, I think love in it. existence. Oh, my gosh. And... Um, so I, I started this. this merchandise line and it has blown up so b- it sells out and just knowing you just for it just but you I'm so a little tiger I showed up and I'm looking at you in your leopard and I said I took off my leopard pajamas put on my leopard <laughs> workout outfit and They're like so I am cute. all leopard so you needed this one I know and then you so needed cute. this one too I know. I need- so I um yeah we just started this living oh, fully co it. it's a community and it's just kind of but it they sell out the Jamie like literally she'll be like okay I'm launching at 10 a.m or whatever it is I'll go on because I'm whatever at 10, 15, 10 gone. 15, you can't it's go gone. at 10, 15. It's like gone. Really it became, unreal. I, all I have to say is it's my, it's the community. It is nothing that I have done. It is just 
mind boggling and blown our mind mm-hmm. the size that um, this merchandise line is has grown to. You've done because yeah. people believe in you. So well, if they believe in you, they want to support you. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. But um, this job runs on, it's like a car runs on gasoline. My job runs on a community of people like believing in what mm-hmm. I do, buying my shirts, um, buying my books, doing all these things. And once they don't, then That's it's awesome. not, it's not a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm so grateful that I'm able to just do these things, put these products so out fun. into the world. And, and you work so hard, seriously. Well, you so are do amazing. you guys. So tell people where they can, the best place to find you. Is it Instagram or yeah. is it your website? So I feel Instagram like your website easy. does everything you do, uh-huh. which I like. But my website is they easy. have to do your stories too. Because Instagram stories are, um, are big for me. I, like I said, I'm a storyteller. I love stories. And I, Mallory Irvin is my um, Instagram. And then MalloryIrvin.com, you can find everything from my podcast to my book to our YouTube channel and the merchandise, everything. But yeah, Instagram stories. I remember like Snapchat was a thing. And I was so excited about Snapchat. And when Instagram did it and I was so mad and I was like, well, they're (laughs) taking away from Snapchat and like everybody watches Snapchat. And and Instagram, everything all being under one roof. So so much easier, I bet. I have not been able to veer off and I know I need to do TikTok and I tried to do it, but I just can I just cannot. I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't know. I just can't get it quite right. But I love Instagram stories and we've got a lot of people watching over on Instagram stories. We really just mm-hmm. show our everyday life. They are not curated. You're not going to see a lot of cool graphics or a lot of branded text. You will see. I know. She in the morning. Goes, I don't I even know it. how to put music on this. I thing. don't. <laughs> I don't know how to use memes or like the GIFs or like the, all those things. <laughs> I know how to just swipe up, and that's. Like and if it. you dare to follow her husband, he's pretty hilarious. He is. <laughs> I think so. On Instagram, you get strikes if you do things that violate the community guidelines. Like, and he doesn't even do anything that bad, but he violates the guidelines. Oh, I love it. Says things and does things. You know, we are also not super. Um, filtered yes. in the yes. so he's my it. wild card and um we'll have to do a yeah. Mallory Irvin part two so we can learn all about this I know yes oh my god well I'm well, sure thank that thank you you guys are gonna have a million great guests and as your first guest first off thank you I feel extremely honored but I think this podcast is going to be really amazing. I think so. Thank you, you are salt of the earth and you are like gasoline and fire in an engine, <laughs> which would make it blow up. So oh, I, I don't think that's the actual <laughs> combo. And yeah. I think you're just like the perfect combination. And I, I'm very grateful. I, to I you agree. Also. I agree. We love each other. She's going to keep me in line. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to oh keep each God. other in line. Oh, oh well, gosh. thank so you for being on Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby. Turn it up now